Hello, thank you for joining me. This is Storyman Jack. I know I haven't put up any videos for the last month, and that is because I've been working. I did not have a day off in December, pretty much. But um, here we are in our new year, and I wanted to give you guys a new episode. Uh, so here is chapter three, um, episode one of House of Cain, Den of Wolves, and I hope you enjoy. House of Cain, Den of Wolves, Chapter 3, Episode 1, The Other Side. Of which those butterflies of earth, who seek the skies, and so come down again, never contented things, Edgar Allan Poe, on fairies. The botanical gardens in Fort Worth, Texas were empty when we arrived. The area can be difficult to get to, the entrance being under a major freeway, but I didn't really pay attention to where we went. I was too busy trying to calm myself before the passage into another dimension. But if you ever get the chance to visit the Botanical Gardens in Fort Worth, I highly recommend it. It is one of the most beautiful man-made gardens on the planet. Kit would guide us, but I had to calm myself for our emotions could throw off where we were to land. If we couldn't control them, those emotions would provide severe turbulence the Kitsune would have to fight. Rumors have always been around that many travelers have fallen into deep winter where there are nothing but starving predators due to this. Accidents do happen to normal people as well and they can find themselves accidentally walking the paths of the other side by dreaming of the place, transporting them there physically. Before I could open the door, Dragomir stopped me and handed me a small leather wallet. Here, it's your ID, he said. I know it won't do you any good over there, but it just came in, so I thought I'd give it to you. I frowned down at the picture I took it 20 years ago when I was in the military. Jackson O. Kane, Team Leader, Homeland Security, Interpol Special Task Force Division, I read. That will get you anywhere in a country that is a signatory of the agreements. I was thoughtful for a moment. So, all the first world countries, none of the third world ones, and basically China will tell us to sit here and wait and never let us in. I said, sneering down at the little plastic ID. I thought you said there was no oversight. Dragomir shook his head. The official station is a fiction, on paper only, in order to get funding. I have signed executive order from the current President of the United States, the uh, President of, and the leaders of various other nations, exempting us from everything except actual treason, including treasonous behaviors. He paused. So, no, there is no oversight. I shook my head. Those of us who are older in the supernatural community just didn't understand that things worked. That only means that instead of being shot, they can confine us indefinitely, entice us in court, investigations and lawyers fee until the end of time and for both of us that's a very long time it is what it is Dragomir shrugged no armor is perfect he paused you be careful in that no matter what you think their motives are never completely what they seem to be we stood before the arch into the Japanese gardens. Kit walked ahead of us and flared her tails, all nine of them. Please, the Mac, my Jackson, must hold on to this one's tails, Kit said in our heads. I reached forward and grasped her tail, trying to be as gentle as possible as I did so. This one would suggest that her Jackson should not treat her like she might break. 
or Jackson could hold on tighter. Then she glanced at Mac and grimaced at his white knuckled grip on her tail. Like the Mac. I looked over at Mac's white knuckles. Are you okay? I asked. He just looked at me with terrified eyes and shrugged his shoulders. Heard some things, that's all. Last night. Well, calm down. You'll make it harder for her to travel. The arch that stood before us suddenly changed. It no longer was an archway to the other side, but a giant mirror. We were not reflected in the mirror, but the images that were, were more than accurate. Everything in the mirror was, well, more. The colors were brighter, more vivid. The edges of things were sharp and easily defined. The world seemed brighter, as if a filter of dark crud was lifted from the scene. Hell, I could even smell the pollen and fragrances of flowering things coming through the mirror far greater than the lush growth around us. Kit began moving forward, and we just let her pull us along. If you've ever gone, never gone to another dimension, even a pocket one, I wouldn't recommend it. Not if you could avoid it. The feeling of going through that portal is almost indescribable. You feel a lurch, and for an instant that seems to go on for an eternity, you are in two places at once that exist simultaneously. Your thoughts, your inputs, everything comes from two worlds at the same time in the same instant and slams into your perceptions. It is too much and your body reacts. Well, mine did. On the other side of the mirror, I bent over and vomited, my stomach refusing to settle until it was empty. I think I lost everything I'd eaten the last five days, to be honest. I looked up to see the Mac had let go at the little Kasune and stared at her in wonder. You, you are beautiful, he said to her. This one is beginning to like the Mac, she said. Are you, is her Jackson taking notes? Mac's ace face was filled with wonder and began to build over into excitement. Are you okay, Mac? I asked. Mac didn't stop his gaze upon this new world, but responding, almost as if a gleeful child. I'm more than okay, Jackson. I feel, feel like I'm home for the first time, like I never even knew it existed, but I had craved it all along. Kilt to her head. This realm is like the dream, the place of your people once long ago. The first people saw the earth as you see this realm, everything connected. The souls of those past returning and becoming a part of the dream. A plant, another soul. A rock, another soul. A human, another soul. All connected, all alive and everything dependent upon one another. Mac just smiled and nodded his head, even though I completely could not understand what she was saying, like her words could only scratch the surface of what he was feeling. I looked at Kit and changed the subject. Where to? She sniffed and began walking toward what I considered the east. I really hope it isn't something like Hey, see that red mushroom? Let's find the brightest, the biggest one and head straight on until morning, Mac said. The mushroom Mac referred to was as big as a house, and I'd say it was more pink than red. This one is expected, Kit said over her soldier. The court will be waiting. I stopped, causing everybody else to stop. Wait, the whole court? Not just your mom? I asked. 
Kit stopped again. This one notes that the gifts were not just from this one's mother, but the people of the sheep and another. I just looked at her. Another? What other? She ignored the question and began walking again. Kit, what other? I was told a gift from the she is a people that you, being you apparently, and a gift from your mother. No one said anything about another. This one remembers that her Jackson was given a gift in his father's stead because of an old obligation that must be met, Kit said. Yeah, I said. This one is from another, not from the queen, Kit said and went between two very large pastel blue mushrooms, their caps covering yards of space. There were trees, but the mushrooms were oft times larger and provided much more shade from the gentle sun. Mac and I followed her through and found ourselves in what appeared to be a great hall with three sides and no roof. I looked back and the mushrooms and paths stood behind me. A great arch we had come through. Behind a great arch we had come through. But the hall was filled with tables and people sitting on the floor, drinking and eating in an Asian style. When one, when a mortal or a being discovers the Fae, the Fae become what they discovered for the first time. The Fae have many aspects, Irish, Roman, Celtic, Norse, Greek, they've been around for a very long time, and they tend to blend so that you don't notice them. As a result, the queen looked to me as Anare, the goddess of fertility and life in the old Japanese and other oriental customs. A throne of red and silver stood at the opposite end of the hall, and upon that throne sat a beautiful woman, appearing of Japanese descent, of an unknowable age. Her face was that of a pretty young lady, just reaching her adulthood, her body that of a mature woman, ready to become a mother. But the most startling was the wisdom in her inhumanly blue and cat-slitted eyes. This was Anare, or, if you would, Titania, or Aphrodite, or Frere. She was the aspect of growth, of fertility, of renewal, and yes, of sex but not the darker aspects of such, not the lust and the hunger, but the need to recreate, to leave something behind. The summer court has always been about growing things and renewal, and it always made my, light, my heart lighter to think of it. Though, they do not have morals as mortals do, and a necessary thing that may seem cruel to us would be needed and done as a matter of course for the Fae, for they are creatures of obligation. She stood as we made our way toward the throne between the tables and quiet guests. Her face was a mask, but there was something a warmth and at the same time hardness in her eyes as she stared into mine. The cane has finally come, Kit said to her mother as we reached the dais before her throne. She just stood and nodded, staring me, continuing to stare me in the eyes. I wanted to look away desperately, for there was power and knowledge in there I knew I could not handle. 
Besides, looking someone in the eye is really difficult to do. Try it sometime, even with somebody you know well and trust. If you look them in the eyes for too long, it gets damned uncomfortable and way too intimate. Yes, the queen said, without any dialect at all. Perfect, straight English. Come, Jackson Kane, the queen said, holding out her arm so I could take her hand. We must see another to finish this business. Who is this other? I asked, genuinely curious. That was when the queen smiled, and that smile lit up the whole area as we began to walk. And no, I'm not being figurative. I mean, when she smiled, the whole physical area around us changed. Flowers bloomed, plants grew straighter, taller, animals began to show themselves and frolic, and my own heart, I must admit, lightened. We have kept a secret from thee and thine, one of many you will come to know, Anari said. What secret? I grumbled. Which one? There are apparently hundreds of things that thousands of people are keeping from me, and have been my entire life. Come, Anari said, and pulled me down another path. You must realize, Jackson Kane, that all secrets always lead to more secrets. That is the nature of knowledge. Okay, so tell me this. Since they're under my protection, apparently, where are Mac and Kit? I asked. Anari laughed. Kit has duties in this cult, though they are not tied to her mantle. She's a good child and has a strong work ethic. But when here, but when on earth, she may neglect those chores. And Mac, I asked, your associate has found a kindred spirit of his people and is learning their ways. In time, and training, it will become a powerful tool in the times to come. I growled, tools. They aren't tools. The queen stopped, genuinely surprised, and looked at me. They? Kit or Mac, I said. People aren't tools to be used and discarded. I knew how the Fae worked. How they tricked and schemed and got their way. The queen smiled and began walking again, pulling me closer to her. So, you have become fond of our little mischievous kit. Well, more like suspicious, but we fought together, so I trust her a bit, I said. Suspicious, she asked. Suspicious. She is bonded to me. She's called me her mate. I took a deep breath. I didn't want to start a fight with a firstborn child of the Nephilim in her own domain. See, I am a little smart. And? she asked. Well, first of all, she isn't mortal, I said. And neither are you, she said in a tone final with its emphasis. I hadn't been paying attention to our surroundings and found myself before a large cave as she stopped. It was almost cliche. Hang on a minute, I said out loud. That's the cave from Monty Pop? Are we visiting a giant vampire rabbit? I asked. She turned to me, eyebrows raised. Hardly, if there ever was such a monster. Then the dragon came out of the cave. Now, if I were to visit a dragon, and assumed that they were real, I would have expected an oriental dragon, snake-like in its nature, and uh, resembling, you know, something oriental, right? No. This was a creature out of storybook. A particular storybook. It looked exactly 
as I had always imagined smog from Tolkien's opus. I am no monster, young king. A voice, gravelly, yet in a smooth way, spoke inside my head. Dragon, I said. I knew I wasn't being coherent. I was staring at a fucking dragon. As big as a house. This form was part of a bargain made so long ago that the years would have little meaning for you. It said, you may call me the old one. No, I said, my brain finally understanding what they were trying to tell me between the lines so they could not admit a lie. And it wasn't really a lie, it was of omission. And the she could awfully get away with that. The Nephilim were wiped out, I said. Not at all. Most, yes. Some of us were given tasks and sent to dwell here. Long before the flood wiped out our more selfish and corrupted brothers. Old one, the queen began. We are here. It is time. And... Obligation has been met. The bee sat back and chuckled. It, at least I think it was a chuckle. Yes. Obligation. I have my task. Three gifts. To be precise. Wait. Three gifts? That's been your task? You have sat here since the beginning of time? To complete your task? Indeed, Jackson came. And you would do this for one of the cursed? Another voice asked. It sounded exactly like Anare, but was not her. I smell the stench that begot the vampires in his blood. Sister, Anare said. The woman coalesced out of the mist and with white hair and luminous, slightly blue-tinged skin. Her lips were dark purple, as were her eyes, also slitted like a cat. She was the exact same as her sister, just colored different, and different expression. Nemoi, the dragon greeted. We had thought you would not attend, given your arguments you know my thoughts do what you will if my arguments and the truth will not dissuade you then I have nothing left to offer but to have war over it and this is no time for any of us to be doing that the Queen of Winter said the die was cast long ago sister we knew this day was coming, and that one, such as he, would come for it. The cane is not what he appears, Nemur. As you well know, the dragon said. The Queen of Winter. Now I knew as Nimue. Though I thought that was Merlin's girlfriend. But, you know, all that stuff was messed together. It could be very well the same thing, Mad Nimue. Lady of the Lake, all the same being, playing tricks on humans as the she are oft times known to do. She sauntered over to me and licked her lips, and though an outsider would have thought it was seductively, it was more like hunger. This one is weak, too weak to do what must be done. Why? Anari asked. Why would you say it is weak, sister? She asked, her curiosity actually real. One raised as a mortal, no matter the power in their blood, cannot do what must be done. Their hearts are weak, and they show mercy when it is not 
necessary. There was a rumbling coming from the dragon, and though the fear began to rise in my very soul, it subsided when I realized it was laughing. The dark tween queen spun to me, spun to the dragon as it spoke. Child, it addressed the Winter Queen. This one is unlike anything else that has ever walked any of the realms. I cannot see into its heart, can thee? What has been done to it in its short span of years has hardened it where you do not see it. Do not mistake courtesy and carefulness for weakness. This one is sharp and it will cut thee. Nimue lifted her hand. As you say, old one, I don't believe it. This conversation is tedious anyway. I have not come to see it through. I have come to pay my respects to my father and see thee gone. The dragon bobbed its head at the dark queen in acknowledgement. Wait, I said. Gone? The dragon turned back to me, swinging its massive head to look me directly in the eye. It filled me with warmth and love. Direct contradiction to every dragon tale I'd ever been told. Child, since my task began so long ago that I hardly remember its beginning, I knew that my task was my death. And I've been prepared for it. Think, Jackson Kane. Why are you here? Why do you exist? What is your purpose? Mine was to live and to die. I'm confused, I admitted. And Ari smiled and grasped my hands. Jackson Kane. What? Can you tell me of Mithril? What did Mithril have to do with it? Just tell me. It's a metal. Silver. Pure silver, some say. Some say a silver mined with magic or, or infused with magic. It has every property of steel and can be worked as such and hold its edge. Actually, you don't even have to sharpen the stuff. It keeps its edge forever, without taint, without rust, without anything. And it affects monsters just like silver. In fact, my research tells me it's supposed to be more potent than anything against the cursed. Though, I believe it doesn't really exist. And it's a fairy tale. Anare laughed, and surprisingly, the Queen of Winter did as well, as did the dragon. Jackson Kane, the dragon said. Yes, it is a myth. That's what dragons mean. Myth. Mithril. Mithril has properties of metallic substance, but it's not metal at all. It is the bones of a Nephilim. The old one paused. My death will give you a weapon to fulfill the obligation of your father, and it shall lay in thy left hand. I will lay another weapon in payment to the debt I owe my daughters. They have transferred to thee into thy right hand and the last piece that will go to another whom I love no Jackson said no 
I said, realizing that the last dragon was about to give its existence for items, for things. Material things are never worth a life, I told him. Ah, uh, thy heart is right, but these are not things, Jas Jackson. They are power, and I give my life to save another. Have you not, Jackson Kane, yourself risked your life thinking it was gone to save another? I do so to save thousands, hundreds of thousands, billions. Would you do that, Jackson Kane? I had to admit, our family has been doing that since we decided to go after the ones we've cursed. Billions, though. Billions, I questioned. What powers do you believe that you are up against, child? This is no rogue wolf or master vampire we fight. This is power, eternal and unforgiving. What? I asked. That is enough, Nemue. That time has not yet arrived, if it ever will, the dragon scolded. Jackson Kane. I have obligation, and as I fulfill it, I give you all my blessings to you, and hope that I meet thee again in the realm of the Creator. The dragon vanished, suddenly and without fanfare, it just ceased to be, and in its place lay dark dragon skin wrapped bundle and I knew the universe had just been diminished this is the end of chapter 3 episode 1 the other side next time we will explore the gifts Jackson received and their meaning in Chapter 3, Episode 2, The Gifts of the Dragon. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed. This is Story Man Jack. And we hope you've enjoyed this program. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And please, most importantly, tell me, good or bad, what you thought about the video. We cannot grow as artists if we can't accept criticism. Again, thank you, and remember, your story is the most important story you will ever tell. So let's make it a great one. Have a great day.